In this section, we are going to discuss general recursive algorithms. That means algorithms that mostly focus on recursion alone, without any other bells and whistles to distract from the general recursive idea. They will require creative thinking, but they won't require any special knowledge about data structures or other kind of more advanced algorithms. It's very similar to the first section in this regard, where we did a lot with very little. We will do the same kind of approach in this section, but we will focus on recursive algorithms. In this video, we are going to talk about the Towers of Hanoi with four pegs. Recall the Towers of Hanoi problem with three pegs, the classical one. So we have three pegs denoted by these rectangles here, and the leftmost peg is the source peg, or the start peg, and it has n disks on it, three in this example, sorted from bottom to top, from the largest to the smallest. And we have to move all of these disks to the end peg, the rightmost peg, or the destination peg, such that we do not place a larger disk on top of a smaller one. And we have to do it in the minimum number of moves possible. So the first step here would be to move the blue disk to the destination peg, then to move the green disk to the intermediary peg. This peg is called an intermediary peg because it helps us move the disks, but it has to be empty in the end, as all the disks will have to be on the destination peg. The next step is to move the blue disk on top of the green disk on the intermediary peg, and we can do this because the blue disk is smaller than the green disk. We couldn't have moved the green disk on top of the blue disk, for example, because the green disk is larger, and the rules prohibit us from doing this. So. This move makes sense here. And then we move the largest disk, the red disk, to the destination peg. Then the blue disk back to the source peg. The green disk on top of the red disk. And finally we finish the problem by moving the blue disk on top of the green disk and therefore moving all of the disks to the destination peg. So we did this in the minimum number of moves possible which is 2 to the power of 3 minus 1, so 7 in this case. For 3 pegs, the optimal solution always uses 2 to the power of n minus 1 moves. And here is the code for this. So you might have noticed that we moved n minus 1 disks to the intermediary peg, then moved the largest disk to the destination peg, and then those n minus 1 on the intermediary peg to the destination peg. So we have here a function that takes as parameters the number of disks, the label of the starting peg, the label of the intermediary peg, and the label of the destination peg. If n is 1, then all we have to do is move the single disk from the start peg to the destination peg, and end the algorithm. Otherwise, we will have a recursive call which will move n minus 1 disk from the start peg to the intermediary peg using the destination peg as the intermediary, just like we did in our example above. And after this recursive call finishes, we are left with one disk on the start peg and an empty destination peg because all the other n minus 1 disks are now on the intermediary peg. So we simply move that single disk from the start peg to the destination peg. And then we move the n minus 1 disks that were left on the intermediary peg to the destination peg using the now empty start peg as the intermediary peg. So I know this is kind of abstract, so I encourage you to run this code and go through a few examples by hand and based on the moves that the algorithm will print, try to draw out how the problem looks like at each step. Draw the pegs and the disks until you are convinced that this works and that this is the right approach. And try to do it for up to n equals maybe 5 in order to fully understand the problem and how it works.
But as you can see, we only use simple recursive calls. We don't even have any local variables other than the parameters. So it's a very simple algorithm, but it might take a while to fully understand. So I encourage you to spend the time to understand it. For four pegs, we introduce another intermediary peg, and the problem otherwise stays the same. So first of all, we will move the blue disk to the first intermediary peg, the green disk to the second, the largest red disk to the destination peg, the green disk to the destination peg, and the blue disk to the destination peg as well. And you can see that we have a smaller number of moves here, only five moves, and it's harder to prove what the optimal is here, so I'm not going to get into that, but we're going to present an algorithm that is good enough and that probably gives the best solution for most, if not all, the cases. But we're not going to prove any of this. So the algorithm does well enough with regards to number of moves, but we're not going to actually prove that it's the optimal or that it's not the optimal. The code here is actually very similar to what we have before with just one intermediary peg. So we have two stop conditions now, if n equals zero and n equals one. This is because we will subtract two in the recursive call, so we might then end up with a zero here. So, uh, what changes here? So, we will move n minus 2 disks from the start peg to the first intermediary peg, and then we will be left with two disks on the start peg. So, we will move those two here with three moves. We will move them from the start peg to the destination peg using the second intermediary, which should be empty now because we moved everything to the first intermediary. So we'll use the second intermediary in order to be able to do these three moves. And then we'll move the remaining n minus two disks, which are now on the first intermediary peg, to the destination peg, using intermediary two and the start peg as our temporary pegs. So again, I encourage you to run this code, run it for n equals four, five, maybe even six, you should be able to follow it quite well, even for n equals 6, and make sure you understand what it does. 